Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, broadcaster and analyst for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we have a weekend preview for you all, but we're also going to recap the midweek match against Ole Reign and Racing Louisville. But First, a quick reminder that you can catch all of our episodes and exclusive interviews on YouTube, so please subscribe to our page to get notified whenever we go live. YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. Lisa, we're doing this. Me and you, back at it, pal. How are you? We are doing it. I am good. I'm good. For anyone watching on YouTube or joining us live, Sandra's in a new location, so we'll hear about that, but... um. I'm good. Excited for another week of NWSL competition. On the personal side of things, I am now an aunt times two. My sister had another baby earlier this week, so huge congrats to her. Mom is healthy. Dad is healthy. Baby is all healthy. And now we have a little girl in the family. We are very excited about it. I was also very excited about it because Lisa, of course, sent me a photo or two of the new edition. And uh, we love that. A3 family getting bigger by one. Uh, Love that. Oh, don't worry. She'll have a bucket hat on. She'll wear the fanny pack. She's ready to go. She's already an attacking third fan, which is great. And um, that'll put her to sleep. We're going to play. You're going to play that. (laughs) <laughs> It'll put her to for sure. And even my nephew, he has been in the car when my parents have been listening to our podcast episodes. Um, most recently, he woke up from a nap and my dad yeah, was listening to one of our episodes. And he was like, where's Aunt Lisa? Where is she? So um, attacking third is in the ears of the young for sure. <laughs> I love that. We'll go from a nap because, again, just put the kiddos to sleep with, with our with our boys, our, cum, our calm and soothing voices. That's what gets the kids through their naps. Trust. Uh, yeah. No, love that for you, buddy. Love that. That's that's Thank quite the you. icebreaker, the update, the check in. Yes. I, it's always good to add one to the family, attacking third family, the Roman family, of course. Um, but you, Sandra, you're in a hotel right now. You're joining us live from Las Vegas. Woo, woo, woo. I hope yes. you're winning big. But really, you're there for a conference. How's it going? It's going really, really well. Um, I know we talked a little bit about this uh, last time. You were so kind and you were like being wonderful like hype friend like a little hype bay going on there um just because what's happening right now is the uh na uh, jb and the nhhj uh black and hispanic uh, journalist association conference that's taking place out here so there's it's it's been really eventful the first day i've been here a lot of great uh sessions a lot of good stuff that we're learning um I'm really excited for the panel that I'm speaking on on Friday. Um, it's very, very hot. <laughs> can can confirm. Sources have told me, and I am one of them in this <laughs> blazing desert. They, I was like, man, they really did just put like a city on a desert. That's like a thing yeah. that's happening. So it was incredible. It's incredibly hot. Um, but uh, day one was really good, and day two is off to a good start too. So there's a break in some of the sessions, and we were like, let's hop on here and and chat. And WSL can't can't always t- turn off walk, like work. Like I feel like you and I are always tuned in some kind of way. Like you too have also done your fair share of like attacking third episodes on the from road hotel rooms from a hotel room. So I I've learned from one of the pros myself. Uh, but let's let's get into it because we actually do have one game to recap and then a full slate of games to preview. And we'll let everybody know our picks on those. So midweek action kicking off on a Tuesday. We had a preview of this game, Lisa. I think we both went a certain kind of way. But I also was like, I don't know. These midweek games have a certain kind of energy. And sometimes they could shake out to draws. And I should have gone with my gut, shouldn't I? Uh, you definitely should have. We both picked all rain to win this match against Racing Louisville in Racing Louisville. They played at Lynn Family Stadium on Tuesday. So it was an incredibly quick turnaround on that end of things. And then both Racing Louisville and OL Rain are in action again this weekend. So it's another really quick turnaround. However, we didn't see that many player personnel rotation in this Tuesday match. It was a lot of the consistent players getting a lot of time. When you think at on the OL Rain side of thing, um, Quinn playing 76 minutes, Tobin or Megan Rapino playing 76 minutes, uh, just a lot of players, uh, Rose Lavelle, she ended up playing like 90 minutes 
in this match towards the end of it. So um, not a lot of rotation on either side of things, but man, this game was off to an incredibly oh, fast God. start all season. OL rain has been getting opportunities, creating shots. They've been leading the league in shots and chances created, but not necessarily scoring goals. The opening 30 seconds of this match, it was a beautiful cross from Megan Rapino, a shot on goal. And I think if you just look at the first 30 seconds of this OL Reign Racing Louisville game, it's indicative of the entire game. It, OL Reign on the attack, putting a lot of pressure on. Oh, well, um, Racing Louisville playing great defense. Katie Lund making two huge saves in the opening two minutes of this game. Uh, but OL Reign does get on the board after two corner kicks in the opening two minutes. They find the back of the net, and, and that kind of set the tone of the chaos for the midweek NWSL action. But before the halftime, Racing Louisville able to equalize it. Kristen Davis uh, getting one right before the stoppage time. And then it was just a lot of back and forth in the second half. We saw OL Reign moving quickly. They did a really great job of switching the point of attack whenever they got the ball to, to push down the flanks and, and get into the attacking positions. Great shots, opportunities. Katie Lund is having 12 saves throughout this game. She makes it into the NWSL record book, ties for the most saves in one game. There's also a lot of shots that went just wide. I'm sure that Laura Harvey's not too pleased about that. They, they could have won this one, OL Reign. And frankly, even Racing Louisville, they had a number of great opportunities. Of course, Fallon Tullis Joyce, goalkeeper for OL Reign, always makes huge saves. Uh, but this was a really fun, good Tuesday night match that we got to witness. There was a little bit of that return. I think that the return of that narrative around all rain a little bit though, right? Tons of shots mm -hmm. and, and not being able to to have one of those multi scoreline type of games. Um, and obviously, I think you have something like the the midweek match of, of it all and the quick turnaround of it all that sort of comes into play on this. But Lisa, in your recap of all that right now, there you forgot one big component in this game. There was blood in this game. <laughs> there was stitches in this game. Oh, yeah. There was blood. There was stitches. Gemma Bonner, uh, center back for Racing Louisville, um, got beat up throughout yeah. this game. She, oh. at one point, the training staff had to wrap her whole head up. It looked like she was wearing a hat at the end of it, and, and she continued to play. It was a huge battle. Uh, lots of cards back and forth uh, for suicide on for, throughout this game. Emily Fox getting a card. Tobin Heath getting a card. Um, it, it's, it was it was a freaking battle, this game. There was nails out, ready to fight, ready to claw. And, man, I, I, Gemma Bonner, I hope she's doing all right. That was – and they – it went up for the header. It was Bonner and Alana Cook, I believe, at one point, battling against each other. And as Bonner's getting looked at, uh, the center official makes Alana Cook go to the sideline, get checked out. They do a little bit of a concussion test, and she was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And, frankly, Gemma Bonner seemed – fine mentally throughout the, that game it was just on the surface shedding a little bit of blood a little bit of stitches there for for Bonner yeah and honestly like the the sharing of the points I think for for these two teams you've got all rain that bumps them up for for now you know before this weekend slate of games into it's a fourth place and you've got Louisville who's still in the bottom half of the standings and they, mm -hmm. we've talked about this a lot Lisa how like this is going to be uh, moving forward in the second half of the season if you're one of these kind of bottom half teams that you've got to like not just scrape up every single point that you can but you, you've really got to figure out a way to kind of to to get all three of those points so I, I think you know the big performance from Lund is something that this team is going to try to you know look as a motivating factor heading into next week um they're going to probably look at the fact that they came from behind you know had a conceded mm -hmm. that really early goal able to sustain all that you know pressure from from the rain so i think in terms of a midweek match you're happy with that but i think if you're on the louisville side of thing you really want to start getting um these points if you can and they're going to get another chance and oh rain's going to get another chance this weekend because we've got a full slate 
of NWSL action that's going to be happening this weekend, starting Friday all the way through Sunday. The rundown of matches, uh, you could catch Racing Louisville versus Washington Spirit Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern. That is going to be a CBS a CBS Sports Network match. Portland Thorns FC versus North Carolina Courage are going to be closing out Friday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. San Diego Way versus Kansas City Current going to be kicking things off on Sunday because there is a quadruple header Ooh. taking place on Sunday. So it's Friday and Sunday, y'all. 5 p.m. Eastern for San Diego and Kansas City. Chicago Red Stars will be hosting New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. Also Sunday, kicking off at 6 p.m. Dual kickoff times. Oil Rain versus Houston Dash, also at 6 p.m. Eastern. And Orlando Pride versus Angel City FC, closing things out at 7 p.m. Eastern. Let's let's start with the teams that are going to be going uh, coming off of a very quick turnaround here. Uh, we're already chatting about them. Let's keep that same energy. Racing Louisville going to take on Washington Spirit now. Already talking about how you can catch this one on CBS Sports Network. Lisa, when you're looking at these two teams, I've already like kind of you know brought up two bottom half table teams. Who are you picking in this one and why? So I love this matchup between Racing Louisville and, and Washington Spirit um, because uh, Racing Louisville is coming off of this tie. They have a quick turnaround, which honestly I think is going to benefit them as they head into this match against Washington Spirit. Just based on um, the minutes that they played against a really tough OL Reign side, uh, what we saw from uh, this racing Louisville side against OL rain and, and how they were able to uh, frankly, like uh, keep them to one <laughs> throughout this game. Yeah. Uh, Katie Lund is coming off of a huge performance, which I think will benefit her and Washington spirit. I sound like a broken record have not won a game since May 1st. Uh, All um, they've done huh? is picked up ties and losses along the way. They're coming off of a huge 3-3 tie over North Carolina from last weekend. Um, but if either of these sides, Racing Louisville or Washington Spirit, win this match, either of them will head into eighth place. And when you look at the standings and kind of how this has shaken out, Washington Spirit has played 14 games so far throughout this season. It's a 22 game season. And in August, Spirit only plays three games. They have over a two-week break between August 10th and August 27th. So they need points right now. Frankly, they needed them a month ago. But Washington Spirit needs to pick up points right now over Racing Louisville. If Washington can get on the board first, score early, score fast against this racing Louisville side, it's not necessarily going to deter racing Louisville. We saw it against OL Reign. They were able to come back before half, stay in the game, and fight till the finish. But if Washington can get on the board first, score early and frequently, and just put pressure on racing Louisville's back line with a high press um, and then defensively lock it down in the back, that's going to be the best chance that Washington has because, frankly, Washington needs to win this game. Um, in terms of, of racing Louisville, they've got Jalen Howell right now sitting on four yellow cards, which is not a player you want to lose at this point in the season. So a player like that needs to be extremely careful. And Washington Spirit knows better than any other team when you have a young rookie that can get a temper, uh, which Trinity Rodman was a lot last year. Teams went after her. If they go after Jalen Howell, I could see her uh, racking up another yellow, which necessarily wouldn't benefit Washington, but would hurt racing Louisville in the long run between these two sides. I'm going with Washington spirit. I, I think I have to in terms of, of this match and just how much they need a win. Who do you have racing Louisville, Washington spirit? Who's taking the win? I think looking at these two teams and sort of kind of the results that they are coming off of you got Louisville with the more recent of the two uh, matches here, but listen, that wild, wild three, three draw that the spirit had against the courage. I mean, it, it, it mounted, it amounted to that for a number of reasons, right? We talked about the personnel that was going to be available in that match. And we talked about, um, the fact that those two teams had a lot of familiarity with each other already this year in 2022. So, of course, we were due for like a really high scoring draw between those two sides once more. Um, but I really liked what we saw out of the spirit in that game, particularly from Trinity Rodman. You know, this was a player that wasn't super utilized during the CONCACAF W championship. Um, so it was a player who was uh, looking probably to build her minutes back up, quite frankly, yeah. with the spirit. Um, but also... 
uh, someone who can just go at that back line of of Racing Louisville, of which they've had their defensive struggles this year. And not to put more weight on it, but I, I do wonder if this type of match, as we're looking at teams who are um, those bottom half table teams, if this is some of these uh, some of the matches that we're going to look at and say like this actually can have some real implications in this second half of the season for them. So I think it's got to be a full three points for either team. I think if you are one of these teams going head to head against each other and you're coming out with a draw or on worse on the losing end of things, you're scratching your head and you're wondering, okay, what are we going to be playing for here for the duration of this second half of the season because you you brought up the, a great point about 14 matches already for the spirit you've got 14 matches already for louisville so it's the second half of the season but they're also running out of time they don't have a lot of games they're left running out of time so i need a full three points out of this game and i'm going to be going with the spirit in this one just because i think trinity rodman is going to maybe be the player to watch in this game for sure. Uh, so hopefully we get to come back on here and talk about that. We're correct, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's take a look at the other team that's coming off of a quick turnaround. OL rain versus Houston dash kicking off once more Sunday, 6 PM Eastern. You catch that one paramount plus let's take a look. Let's, uh, let's make some picks in this one. Lisa, who are you picking between rain and the dash? I'm excited for this game. If there's a game I'm going to want to watch this weekend, it's going to be this one. Oh, so you're circling this one. I'm saving my circle for later in our preview of the game to watch. This one's definitely going to be a battle, though, right? OL Reign, they're coming off a very quick turnaround, three games in in eight days or so. Um, And it travel, a lot of travel for OL Reign, going from Angel City to Racing Louisville. And now as they take on Houston Dash, this is just another huge battle between these two sides as they face each other. Luckily, they're at home. OL Reign will be hosting Houston Dash. So Reign is on fire right now in the attacking end of it. Against Angel City, they outshot Angel City 25 to nine, three goals in that match late in the game. Um, then against Racing Louisville, an early quick start, quick pressure on goal. So we've seen both sides of it from Laura Harvey's side, starting the game really quick and then also able to bring in power and energy towards the end of a match. That also has a little bit to do with substitutes. Now we may see player rotation, especially with this OL Rain side, as they're now back at home taking on this Houston dash side. Will we see certain players maybe get less minutes, a Megan Rapino, maybe even a Rose Lavelle, um, maybe even a Jess Fishlock, not racking up as many minutes. I'm not entirely sure about this one, but against Houston dash, we have to look at this and see if Rachel Daly is going to be back for this Sunday match because Houston is coming off back to back four goal wins there. The last one was four two over Gotham. They finding their offensive rhythm. They've got Sanchez who is firing on all cylinders. Ebony salmon has found her groove and understands where the seams are with this team and Shea groom playing in, in behind. And if Rachel da- Daly is added back into this offensive mix, um, but, It's only going to provide more and add more depth and creativity to this Houston front line. It's not going to hurt it. Rachel Daly is just a player that can fit in seamlessly with what's already going on. And despite that, her and Salmon haven't played together yet in Houston. This is it's just an advantage for Houston over this one. I see this game as a draw. But oh, okay, you're saving <laughs> OL Rain and Houston. I really do. I, right. I think Houston's too hot right now. I'm gonna ask you to put a score line on it then. One one. All right, fair enough. I'll give it one one, but I still think they're gonna split points. I and the consistency from OL Rain just isn't convincing enough for me. And, and defensively, Houston has made mistakes. They have forced other teams have forced mistakes on them. Um, so that's where I could see perhaps OL Reign sneaking out a win if they capitalize on one of Houston's defensive mistakes. But otherwise, 1-1 one, one with Rachel Daly back, it's a tie. I don't think that that's an unfair, you know, statement to make or in terms of like, you know, a, a team criticism or an observation of, of Houston and also the rain, quite frankly. I do, I do wonder – if this is going to shake out to be a draw, but like a high, one of those high scoring draws, yeah, just absolutely. because of, you know, just because of the momentum that the dash are on right now. I mean, I, 
looking at the month that they are coming off of, just specifically the last two two matches under their belts. Um, Ebony Sammy, congratulations! You know, earning um, honors for for Player of the Month, just the performances that she's been putting together for this Houston Dash side, and they're doing. They've been putting together these results without Rachel Daly. So this is like a pick that we can make or, or thinking about making a pick within this type of matchup, knowing that this team has performed the way they've been formed, have been performing without their captain, uh, who's been you know coming back as, as a European champion. So I, I'm a little curious um, if we do actually see Rachel. Day. I, I, again, we're doing this before. We might I, mean, not. Really we before, might so not. I have a feeling we might not just that's, that's yeah. a yeah. long tournament to sort of put your body through and quite frankly to throw yourself out the, the window of celebration yeah, and yeah. and she deserves that so i'm not too sure if she's ready to go and 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 you know for for nwsl uh type of competition you know and if she wants or needs the extra week off quite frankly i think the dash are in a position to give yeah. it her to her because of their current form and their recent momentum that they're in i love what we've been seeing out of the dash You're recently third. Houston is third right now in the standings. They're third in the standings, but not just in the standings. The level of play that they've been playing with, the belief that that they're playing with, the confidence that they're playing with, there's there's sort of this just sort of like run at them type of dash. Kind of like reminding me a little bit of that 2020 dashing that we just saw go, 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 go during that inaugural challenge cup. And we've been looking for that kind of dashing. We wondered if maybe that was just a very special moment for that particular club, that it was just like within a bubble and they were able to run a, a, you know, run away with kind of a, a confined, very constructed type of tournament, you know, and running a, 22 to 24 game season it's much it's a much much different grind so i've been impressed with the fact that they've been doing this without missing pieces and yeah. reintroducing those pieces back whether it was a, a prince or a sanchez or eventually a daily adding somebody like a salmon in, into the mix with this one very impressed with them for sure i don't blame you for going with the draw in this one but something else that i've also been equally uh, really impressed with with the dash is their ability to go on the road and yeah. win. and i've been saying that a lot about this dashing that they're not intimidated about going on the road and facing a team away. And I think in this one, that's out the window as well. And you've got mm-hmm. all rain coming off of a, of a short week. I'm going to go dash in this one. I, 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 I like the argument for a draw, but I want to go dash in this one. So that's, that's my pick for, for these two teams. Let's talk about uh, one more here before we go into a break. Let's I love that you picked Houston. Sorry. I'm just still thinking about that. You dropped it right at the end. I love that you picked Houston. I can't wait to talk to you on, on. It must be the heat. I'm like, I'm going to go with all the, <laughs> the teams that have <laughs> very, very warm uh, weather temperaments. Uh, let's go with this last one. Uh, San Diego way. Let's see versus Kansas City current is there a is there a name for this rivalry the two water type of teams the sort of splash zone I don't know yeah the splash cup something like that this one kicking off uh on Sunday 5 p.m check it out on Paramount plus the wave the current Lisa who you got in this one Sandra, this is my match of the weekend. This is the one I'm circling because all of the marbles come down to this game. We we look at uh, the San Diego Wave side that is still at the top of the table. They're coming off of a big win. Um, they have 25 points in this. They're only one point ahead of Portland Thorns. So San Diego, Casey Stoney, they know that the rest of the league is right on their heels. And one of those teams is Kansas City. Kansas City, 19 points at this point. If they get three points in this win over San Diego, they are right there at the top of the table. Um, Kansas City is eight games undefeated right now. They are on some type of streak that they they cannot lose. They're squeaking out ties, right? We, we just saw Kansas City. They are coming off of a big tie over at Orlando Pride, a match in which they went down two goals early in that game. And it wasn't until Kansas City started to find their rhythm in the second half that we saw consistency from the 50th minute to the 90th minute from Kansas City. But the first half of the game, the first 60 minutes, it really wasn't there. And and maybe it's the sparks coming off the bench and players like Elise Bennett um, and what CeCe Kaiser can do up top. But it's it, there needs to be more consistency from Kansas City. Um, so if Kansas City can 
put together a complete game. They have the weapons like Elise Bennett, CC Kaiser, Hamilton up top to score the goals. And remember, San Diego Wave FC is without Abby Dahlkemper for this match. She received a red card in the last time San Diego was out. So Kaylee Real will be back alongside Naomi Gurma in that back line, something that we've seen a lot this, this regular season. Dahlkemper dealt with a bit of an injury for a few months, a few weeks there. So this partnership between Real and Gurma is fine. I actually think it might do better against a side like Kansas City that has to deal with the pace of a player like Kaiser who can sit on back shoulders and get in behind. Uh, but, but something about this game tells me that San Diego is going to be knocked off the top of the standings. Kansas City is going to get a win. And, and with that win and jumping three points in the standings, San Diego not receiving any points in this potential loss. It'll be the end of the first place reign for San Diego after they've been there since May, essentially. I have Kansas City current getting the win over San Diego wave. Lisa, I hate to do this, but I think we're going two for two here because wow. I, again, have really appreciated what we've been seeing out of Kansas City. I am coming off of a recent game that I watched San Diego Wave live, right? They they came to Chicago, went to go cover the game, uh, game locally at Soldier Field. And um, I'm with you on the defensive end of things. Um, Naomi Gurma has been doing a lot of great stuff. She is probably a candidate for many for a rookie of the year caliber type of season, but she picked up a yellow and she almost earned a red quite frankly in, in that game. There were some struggles. Chicago was presenting some very interesting things to that defensive shape of San Diego. And I think if that game ends in a one, one draw versus a one zero scoreline that maybe people are talking about that a little bit more, but it didn't close out that way. They ended up getting the win with, without an Abby doll camper who picked up the red, not going to be available in this match, as you said mm -hmm. as well. And I think that Kansas city has been presenting some very interesting things offensively, but defensively as well. Look, all props to Ebony Salmon for getting that award for player of the month. But I think Adriana French was someone who put cool. together an outstanding month of July with her team uh, as NWSL media were allowed two votes. And I went those two players and I just rated them a little differently, but French for me has been holding a lot of things down for this, uh, this Kansas city side. And then on the other side of things you have Sheridan. So I wouldn't be surprised if this closes out to another one of those one zero kind yeah. of results there's two very good goalkeepers in in this game in particular and that is sort of what my mind is locked in on right now so you get a red card you're missing that next game no doc camper we don't need the uh we don't need the availability report to tell us that we just sort of yeah. know the, the the rules and, and, and regulations and stuff of, of nwsl so not going to have that that starting um, center back who uh, was a big part for them during July. Uh, so I just think with the goalkeepers in this one, we might get another one of those types of matches and it's going to take a moment of brilliance from, you know, somebody on either side of the pitch to kind of get one through. So uh, we'll see if it, for San Diego, that's somebody like, uh, you know, an Alex Morgan, or we'll see if that's yeah. somebody like Kansas city, like an Elise Bennett, quite frankly, who's been able to come off the bench and just really kind of shake things up for Kansas city current. And I, just feel like maybe this might be another one of those games so i am also going with the current in this one it was almost my draw though but i'm not gonna i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna do it i'm in vegas i'm only picking winners on this episode <laughs> of A3. we've got three more games to get through but we're gonna do it right after a quick break now that you've seen them do the universe it's time for them to do a new series Davis, what are you doing uh nothing <laughs> This is going to be cool. Uh, ow. Uh, ow. Uh, ow. Well, we just came here to break stuff. Fire! Uh. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Ah. Beavis and Butthead are back with an all-new series streaming August 4th exclusively on Paramount+. Plus. 
All right, all right. Let's get through the rest of these matches, Paramount Plus games. Let's take a look at the Thorns versus Courage. And Lisa, we goofed. I think this one's actually going to be the CBS Sports game. I'm like look. I'm like looking at the schedule once more. <laughs> so let's make sure we have that correct for all our listeners joining us live and those who are uh, listening afterwards. After we you can up. blame me. You can blame me. I wrote the rundown. I clearly was looking at something wrong. Um, yeah, sorry about that. There, there. On well, Paramount Plus or CBS somewhere, whether it's yeah, Paramount it's Plus, be all Paramount Plus, Plus Network. Yeah, this one CBS Sports Network. But if you're unable to grab that one live, we usually they the app usually puts them up uh, on demand for you, able to drink that. Uh, so let's uh let's go ahead and maybe make some picks in this one, Lisa. So we've got Portland Thorns, North Carolina Courage. I yeah. <laughs> in Providence Park. This in Providence in Park. Oregon. In Oregon. Um, th this is a matchup that we have got to look at between these two sides because Portland right now, they're coming off of a 2-1 win last weekend that they had against Racing Louisville and North Carolina Courage. They are still at the very bottom of the standings. They are literally 12 of 12. They're coming off of a 3-3 draw over Washington. Meanwhile, Portland, they're just one point off San Diego Wave FC that is number one in the standings and, and the Thorns are number two. We saw a change from Reen Wilkinson's side throughout the last month. Portland started this year with a three back. We saw it in preseason. We saw it in the Challenge Cup. Most recently, they switched to a four back based on the personnel that they had or, or rather the personnel they were missing because there was a lot of internationals gone um, over the last few weeks from Portland Thorns. Now, with all of these internationals back, will we see Portland switch back to the three back with three center backs and then having those wide wing back in the wide flank area. We've got Sophia Smith back. We we've had Yasmeen Ryan who has had a tremendous month. She also made best 11, I believe for Portland throughout this month. So they understand their different roles that they can play. And with this, Portland side going against a North Carolina Courage side, the biggest parity between these two teams is their understanding of their role and what they need to do on the pitch. Because Portland has such a deep-seated understanding of how to play the game that Reen Wilkinson wants them to play. Whereas North Carolina, um, it, bottom of the table, they've been struggling to pick up points. They've been struggling with consistency to string full 90-minute games together even though there are great moments of success. Uh, we know that Caroline will not be back for North Carolina Courage. That has already been out and released that she will not be there, but Dubinia um, should be available according to the availability report that's already been put out by North Carolina at this point. Um, and, and also Jorian Balcom was waived by North Carolina. She is going to play overseas. So there's a bit of a change up happening. Now Dubinia for North Carolina has, um, She's coming off of a, a win in which Copa America with Brazil, she scored in the final. She's riding high on energy. She needs to bring that back to this North Carolina side because going up against Portland in Providence Park is going to be a really tall task. And because of that, I have Portland getting three points over North Carolina. No ties here, but a full win for the Thorns side for me. Are you, are you with me on this one, Sandra? Are you throwing me a curveball here? No, you see, I know you see me nodding in this hotel room. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you for all the reasons you mentioned and some more, quite frankly, I just, yeah. you know, the personnel that the thorns have right now sort of been referring to this team, this club as one of the deeper benches in the league for, for some time, quite frankly, honestly, like at least the last couple of seasons at minimum. Um, Sophia Smith making her return, looking like she's not missing a beat. And quite frankly, the evolution, the continued development that we're seeing out of uh, Yasmin Ryan, uh, Morgan Weaver, getting on, on the score uh, line a little bit for, for Portland as well uh, during the month of July. And uh, honestly, probably making a little bit of uh, forcing the Portland coaching staff into some tough decisions. Like, how do you continue to play this well and figure out a way to continue to keep all of these players on the pitch, right? Like, how do you... How do you tell Jasmine and Ryan, I don't know if you can start anymore. Let's like, exactly. not <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's a, a champagne problems maybe, it's, right? That's why we might see a formation switch for Portland yeah. side to keep more of those influential players on the pitch. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. So I think, 
um, a number of those factors coming into play. The fact that they're uh, you know, going to be the host in this one. Uh, North Carolina Courage just have struggled uh, all season, really, coming out of uh, the Challenge Cup. Um, they're, they're a team that has been competitive on the pitch, but the results just have not been there uh, for them during this regular season. So it's like you, I think we're still looking maybe for like those those wins or those margins in which n- like North Carolina can – look like the team I think that people are, are used to seeing this sort of team that I mean other oppositions maybe fear going up against I'm not necessarily sure if that's the case anymore but they're coming off of a, a wild draw against against the spirit again another one of those matchups where it's bottom team matchup and you want to walk away with all three points and while the courage do have a number of games in hand moving forward into this second half of the season uh, these are one of those battles in which it's going to be like a very difficult match to try to swing some type of result. So I wouldn't be surprised if like if they end up getting a draw, like maybe they might be content with that. Obviously, if they get the win, they'll be even more thrilled. But I just don't know if this courage side has enough, yeah. not with personnel on the pitch and quite frankly, things that are happening off the pitch. There were some negative headlines around the club uh, coming out of their pride game with one of their players, you know, refusals to participate in that. It's not a good time for this club right now. So you we've seen this club go through what they went through last year in terms of negative headlines, having some more kind of follow them a little bit through, through this year. Sometimes that impacts a player and, and, and the locker room and, you know, performances on the pitch. So I, I, I absolutely am, am with you in, in the thorns taking all three points in this one. I completely agree with everything happening off the pitch. The only thing that may I don't even know in some weird twisted way benefit North Carolina. Is that they're not playing at home, right? They're traveling. So they are playing in Providence park. So uh, really the, the home fans and, and the courage supporters are the ones that are very upset about the player, not dressing for the pride game last week. So that's maybe the only thing, but still upper hand goes to Portland in my eyes. Yeah, no, I'm with you 100% on that one. Let's talk a little bit about Chicago Red Stars versus New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. This is going to be one of the matchups on Sunday, uh, kicking off alongside uh, that OL Reign and Houston Dash game. So two games kicking off Sunday at 6 p.m. Chicago and Gotham are the other one of those. Lisa, do you have a winner in this one? You already chose a draw. A draw. So I, I don't know if you're going to choose another one. Do you have a winner in this one? Well, well there's no written rules for the attacking yeah. third preview predictions and picks about how many draws we can do, but it's a bit of an unwritten rule that we really challenge like ourselves. To pick one. Yeah. We really only like to pick one. I'm sticking with it. I have Chicago winning this match against Gotham FC. Chicago is just a team that kind of, uh, was unlucky last weekend uh, against a San Diego side that scored one against them. And, and that was the game changer. It came from the 17 year old Jalen Shaw. Perhaps it was a bit of a defensive breakdown on Chicago side that San Diego was able to capitalize on. But because of that, the, in, in terms of just attack, right? Sometimes we talk about it, all vibes, no defense, all attack in terms of the attack, Chicago's attack is going to score more than Gotham's attack every day of the week. I'm going to say that every single day of the week. So because of that, then we then we look at the defensive side of things. And Chicago's defense is also incredibly strong, right? They've got Nair in goal. They've got Morse in the back line. They've got Malazzo. They have a consistent back line that has done well throughout this regular season. And, and because of that, with only 17 goals against, going up against a Gotham side that has 22 goals against, in, in terms of numbers, I still give it to Chicago. Chicago's right on the bubble. They're fifth right now in the standings. They need three points. They've got to jump up. These are games um, at home against a Gotham side that they can pick up points. And Chicago needs to do that. Um, They they scored first, a Gotham, against a Houston side. But then they couldn't close it out. Then it was an own goal. Gotham's coming off that really tough 4-2 4-2 loss to Houston, but they got on the board first, and then late in the game, Margaret Purse reminded us that the game's not <laughs> over until the final whistle is blown. Yeah. We could see some of that energy against the Chicago side, but in the end, I, I think the Red Stars will come out victorious over this Gotham side. That just hasn't it hasn't really been consistent at all this regular season. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. Quite frankly, I think if the Red Stars drop this one against Gotham at home, that's um, A, cause for disappointment, and B, 
I don't know if I would say cause for concern, but you're asking some questions of yourself as a team a little bit. You're coming off of two losses and you're going up against a team that you put up a multi-goal game on um, and were riding high off of one of the wins that they got during their month of, of July when when some of their internationals were away. Uh, but I think if they don't get the three points, like I said, maybe not cause for, for ringing the alarm, but maybe they'll ask themselves so, some, some questions on themselves as a team, like what, what went wrong here. So I absolutely Absolutely, I'm looking for Chicago to pick up the win here at home against Gotham. I think we saw, again, coming off of what I was witnessing from this team last week and getting to sort of cover the game in person, we saw the uh, introduction or the reintroduction of Aaron Wright more as a defensive back for this team. She's been utilized more in the fullback wingback position, even in years past has been primarily in the left back position, but has also been one of those versatile players for Chicago and has played in the front line, a player that before uh, coaching staff have sort of tasked her playing alongside Sam Kerr. So we've, we've seen uh, Aaron Wright kind of be in that even as a sort of forward uh, winger position as well. So uh, the, just the fact, I think, that she kind of got her start with this franchise as a defender, they're thin in their back line right now. So as, as strong as maybe they are in their offensive shape, they are running out of bodies in in yeah. in that three back system. So because of Wright's experience, I wouldn't be surprised if during this second half, it's about kind of utilizing her in that yeah. sort of three center back, that sort of three defensive back kind of shape. Um, and we got to see her kind of go to work on on Alex yeah. Morgan. And I think if you're looking at Gotham, your the plan is to say, okay, well, this is your best player right now, and in, in Mitch Purse. We're going to try to assign a player and task a player to put her, you know, I, in I her think pocket. That's the smartest I think decision yeah, they might do. Yeah. Yeah. And they might give that to Aaron Knight. So I think, uh, you know, Gotham just isn't showing what we thought we would see from then. And quite frankly, until they start showing it, I don't think a lot, there's going to be a lot of folks out there making the picks, including us. So I'm also going uh, with uh, with Chicago in this one as well. So let's see if we're correct. We're going two for two for a couple of these games. And sometimes I get nervous when we do that. We both picked Portland. We both picked Kansas City. We both picked Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I listen. I we'll find out. We'll find out. Last one though. Last one. Orlando Pride versus Angel City. This one Sunday, seven p.m. It's the game that's closing out the weekend. Uh, Cindy Larue gonna get to go up against her former club. Yeah. What's the energy, Lisa? What are you feeling out of this one? It, talking about Gotham, a team that is is performing very differently than what we expected. I think we can say the same for this Orlando Pride team. They are performing well above their expected performance, I'm going to say. They're overreaching at least the bar that I had set for them at the start of this season. They're coming off of that 2-2 tie against Kansas City, the 0-0 draw against Washington Spirit, um, picking up points right over their last couple games. Their, their last four games, three of them have been draws, two of them Two two draws. So because of that, Orlando Pride knows how to score goals, right? So against this Angel City side where we've seen them be burned, Angel City in the first five minutes of a match or of a half, and we've also seen them capitalize in the first five minutes. We've all we've also seen that from Orlando Pride against Kansas City. They scored early, twenty fifth minute. They got another one at the start of the second half, and and they went up to nothing. But they weren't able to hold on to that that score line throughout the rest of the game against Kansas City. I think the the mindset needs to be very similar against this Angel City side because. As you mentioned, Sydney LaRue going up against her former team. Now she's in a pink jersey going up against the purple. And that has to give motivation to a player like LaRue. Luckily for Orlando Pride, they have trained against a Sydney LaRue for a very long time. So they maybe know how to defend against her a little bit, at least know uh, what she can do and how dangerous she can be. So defensively, the lockdown for Orlando needs to be there uh, completely, completely. But I, I think yeah, if Sydney LaRue wasn't on this side for Angel City, I might say that this would be a draw between these two. I, okay. I do. However, with Sydney LaRue playing for Angel City, going up against her formal, former squad, this game that's being played 
in Orlando. So Sydney Lou is going to have to travel. The fans for Orlando, they're, they're not mad at LaRue. They still love her. So I imagine that the fan base is not going to feel like an away game for LaRue. If anything, it might feel like a home game. And I give that advantage to LaRue all day. She, she's going to be fired up. She's essentially going back to where she was for so long in Orlando. The fans are going to be excited to see her. I give Angel City the win in this one purely because of that emotional side of things and how Sydney LaRue can change a game. Look, I think this one could be close, but it's not just Sydney LaRue. I mean, we're talking about Claire Emsley as well. Yeah. Who's going to get a crack at the pride. Uh, you know, another player that I don't know, I would say, I wouldn't say that maybe didn't things and didn't end well when she was with that, that franchise got brought into uh, the club. Then was like, uh, how about if I went back to Europe and went on a loan with Everton and then stayed in Everton and only made her return back to NWSL uh, through through Angel City, who picked up the uh, rights, I believe, during the expansion draft. So I'm looking for a couple of players here on Angel City who are going to look at this game and want to have strong performances uh, against this against this side. So um, I think this is another one of those games for me as well. I think speaking a little bit about spirit uh going up against louisville bottom half teams right maybe looking at games that are kind of perhaps going to be targeted as must wins uh despite x amount of games still remaining in the second half of the season this is another one of those for me a little bit just because of the number seven and the number eight they're right on top of each other uh in that bottom half of the table you know three points for orlando can sort of you know, make things very, very interesting in the standings between LA, between Orlando. So I'm, I'm looking for Angel City to come out and bring the energy. Fire! <laughs> I really, really am. Um, you know, there sometimes it could be a little bit of a home advantage for the Pride. It's tough playing out in in Florida. Yeah. We we see the the fatigue set in sometimes depending on on the weather, if, if humidity is coming into play. It's a, it's not it, it's not often been an easy place to play if you're if you're the opposition. But the fact that Angel City's got a couple of players who are not unfamiliar with that and attacking minded players, players that can make you pay, quite frankly, I think that is a little bit advantageous uh for uh, Angel City. So this one was up in the air, and I was wondering if I was going to, you know, go with a draw in this one. But like I said, I'm in Vegas. I'm only picking winners on this episode. So I'm going to give advantage to Angel City, and I'm going to say they're going to walk away with three points in this one. That's it. That's all six games. We'll see how it shakes out, Lisa. We'll see. We will see how it shakes out uh, because, man – Six games, 12 teams. We have a lot of the same picks. I'm going to be honest on this one, but yeah. I'm excited for this weekend and what it can bring. It's just Friday and Sunday are the matches. They're all stacked up on Sunday. Um, traveling a bit on Sunday is a bit of a programming note for everyone, so we're not going to do a live recap on Sunday night. We'll go Monday morning. You can join us live on YouTube for that one to, to recap all of these games. But um, Sandra, enjoy your conference and Thank enjoy you. the games this weekend, everyone. I'm excited to to recap it all with you next week. We'll chat about it. I'm, I'm really, really hyped to, to go ahead and do the recap. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. The travel note, appreciate you letting everybody know. Lisa, we'll be with you on Monday to talk about all these matches. If you uh, appreciate it, you know, uh, our, our banter with each other is, is always, just know that you can go ahead and uh, continue your support uh, of Attacking Third in a multitude of ways. Uh, one of those ways was we kept pushing uh, the awards that we were nominated and yeah. voted for. So we just want to give a final thank you to everybody who voted for us. Uh, we appreciate that. I saw in one of the standings at one point, I think we were like, in the top three or top four like that was yeah, really huge. like I was really I was really touched by that that was really really nice um it's a pretty you know prominent soccer podcast that have been around for a while you know compared to us who've been around only a year so um thanks everybody we really 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 do appreciate uh your support and and you know you come and joining us and listening to us in our in our take so uh, follow us across all streaming platforms uh, uh apple podcast spotify stitcher anywhere you listen to your shows follow us across all social media channels tiktok instagram twitter at attacking third we're available as video so please hit subscribe if you haven't already at youtube.com slash attacking third and we will be back on a monday to recap the full slate of games for sandra and lisa roman this was attacking third